Hello and welcome. With this video, we're working with the solo model, the basic solo model, uh, and we're dealing with shocks and transition dynamics. And the specific shock we're dealing with is a change in the depreciation rate, that's delta. Uh, and we're going to increase and decrease the depreciation rate, and we're going to see the effect of that on, yeah, the solo model. So we'll see how that changes the steady state value of capital per worker and so forth, and we'll see how things evolve through time if we started off at a steady state. Cool. So, uh, oh yeah, also keep in mind this is one video among many, so check out the video description for a link uh, for more stuff on the solo model. Great. So, uh, yeah, to, to see the effect of a change in delta, the depreciation rate, let's think about um, the solo model. Uh, actually, I guess what's helpful is first off to think about, well, what exogenously could change the uh, depreciation rate? You know, delta is one of the parameters that's treated as completely exogenous. Uh, and what is it, first off? So uh, depreciation is if you, uh, I don't know, basically when you when you get capital, you don't really expect capital to exist forever in the economy. You buy a car, you buy a factory, uh, you buy anything that's considered capital, and you sort of expect it to depreciate over time. So suppose you buy a factory or a car or something, and you expect the lifetime to be about, say, 100 years, well, then the depreciation rate is about 1%. Uh, similarly, if you buy something and uh, you expect it to, to, to last about 20 years, then the depreciation rate on an annual basis is about 5%. So that's how we think about depreciation. Uh, so what could change the depreciation rate? Well, uh, the classic example you usually see in textbooks is, uh, is usually along the lines of this. Suppose uh, weather patterns are worse, uh, resulting in an increase in depreciation. What is the effect on the economy? That's, that's the one I usually see the most. Is suppose weather is worse or something. But you could also imagine I don't know. There could be any. There could be an infinite number of explanations for the change in the exogenous parameter delta. Um, okay, so that's the starting point. Well, how does that affect the model? So let's look at the solo diagram to see how that changes our steady state values. So where is delta? Delta here is here uh, on the yellow line, which is our break-even investment line. So as a reminder, uh, what is uh, this line right here? This line right here tells you that. Given any value of capital per worker, this yellow line tells you the amount of capital per worker required uh, in order to keep capital per worker constant from one period to the next. Right. Um, so the idea is that if the investment rate is equal to that break-even investment rate, you then have our steady state capital per worker. Uh, if you have a high value um, of existing capital, you you need a high value of investment in order to keep that capital per worker constant. Similarly for low value in that direction. Okay, so that's this break-even investment. Uh, and depreciation doesn't enter the equation, doesn't enter into these other variables at all. So this is the only place delta is. Uh, and then if we increase delta, what does that do? Well, increasing delta increases the slope of this line. So the line is stuck at the origin. So if we increase delta, it's just the slope of this line that's going to make this slope upward. So what does that look like? Uh, here's the handy thing. This is from Wolfram Alpha, uh, and it's like a demonstration of a solo model that someone created nicely for us and is free. Uh, so if we increase delta, you can see the blue line is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Um, and that also implies that the steady state value of capital per worker is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So the, the steady state value of capital per worker is where these two lines intersect, where the investment line intersects with the break-even investment line. So if this thing gets more higher and higher sloped, that's going to bring down the steady state down here. And I'll show you that in a single diagram in one second. So we see that here. We have an increase in depreciation. So we started off with a delta sub naught, and we went up to delta sub 1, where delta sub naught is less than delta sub 1. So we have an increase in the depreciation rate. That increases the slopeness of that break-even investment line. Uh, so where before we had a steady state value, k star sub naught, uh, the sub naught is to indicate where we start off. Uh, we now have this new intercept, k star sub 1. Uh, and given that depreciation has increased, the steady state value of capital per worker has decreased. Uh, so the first step, remember, to finding how things have changed is uh, you find the new steady state value of capital per worker. And output per worker is just a function of uh, capital per worker, right? So output per worker is just uh, total factor productivity times the steady state value of capital raised to the alpha. So we see at this st new steady state value of capital per worker, it's this level of output, so uh, y star sub 1. Cool. 
So yeah, that's that. We know that instantaneously the steady state value of capital per worker and output per worker has increased. Uh, so now the next question is, well, how do things evolve through time, right? Uh, we know that capital uh, evolves through a dynamic process. So even though the steady state values might instantaneously change, um, the actual values of capital um, take time to change because capital uh, is ruled by this law of motion of capital, this capital accumulation equation that uh, could only change the stock of capital gradually. So let's look at the time series graphs, time series charts to see how things evolve. Um, but we can see this. Um, so right, we were here at this level of capital and then the depreciation jumps up to this level so uh, starting on this level, the break-even investment line, this yellow line, is right here for that capital, but the investment line is down there. So break-even investment is above uh, actual investment. So this delta K is greater than the investment in that period. So we know that delta K is going to be negative, right? Because this amount, you know, the law of motion capital is ruled by the difference between investment and uh, depreciation. And since depreciation, given that amount of capital, is greater than investment, we know that capital is going to decrease. So because this point right here is above our investment line, uh, capital is going to definitely go down. So let's look at how things evolve through time in time series. So here we have log output per worker. Oops, give me one second. So looking at per capita levels, uh, we were at this level of capital per worker. So this line right here uh, represents K star sub 1 in the solo diagram. Sorry, K star sub naught in the solo diagram. Uh, given the increase in the depreciation rate, we now have a new steady state value of capital per worker. So this line right here is K star sub 1, uh, corresponding to this. Um, so the, the, at this dotted line is where I increase the depreciation rate. Um, so it, the out, capital per worker doesn't move instantaneously, it goes through that, you know, it's ruled by the law of motion of capital through a slow transition process um, as it converges to the new steady state level. Output for worker, sh uh, shifting, transitioning from uh, Y star sub naught to Y star sub one has a similar process. You know, output for worker, Y is just a function of capital for worker. So the shape of this is just gonna match the shape of this. Uh, and a similar process for consumption per worker and investment per worker as well. Since uh, consumption per worker and investment per worker, you know, are just fractions of output per worker, you got, you got that. Okay. Um, so that's that. Uh, I guess intuitively we should also think about, well, uh, we increase depreciation in the economy, so a greater portion of uh, stuff is being destroyed, a greater portion of capital is being destroyed each period. Um, it's not unreasonable to then assume that, you know, people are worse off from that, I guess, a bit more intuitively. Um, if it's more expensive to maintain the capital stock, you know, you have to uh, give a higher portion of your uh, savings just to maintain the same amount of capital stock, and it's reasonable to assume that, uh, you know, consumption is going to decrease. So that's, I guess, it's like, just, sorry, a hint on the intuition. Uh, okay, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.